Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So my name's Amy and today I've actually got my daughter with me and her name is... Honey. Honey, yeah. And she wanted to join in today because this is her absolute favourite animal of ours. And it's really nice actually because she's around about the age that I first had my um, reptile and now she's got hers. A lot of you probably already know if you follow me on Instagram, I've recently rehomed, uh, adopted a leopard gecko. Now I have been without a leopard gecko for quite a few years now and it's been the best decision I've ever made. So I first had my first leopard gecko when I was eight years old and absolutely adored it. And then I went on to work in um, like an exotic pet store uh, for about three years. So from when I was about 15 years old to 18. And during that time, um, me and my, my boss and everything, we used to travel to all sorts of reptile shows, bird shows, because we used to do a lot of bird breeding. Um, so yeah, we saw a lot of the hobby. Um, it was like proper crash course in them three years of learning pretty much everything about so many different types of reptiles, amphibians, everything. And yeah, we used to travel to a lot of shows. Uh, my favourite was when we used to travel over to Germany to the big massive reptile show that they do over there in Ham. That was absolutely fantastic experience. And yeah, it's just been a massive part of my life ever since. So I've owned a, a multitude of reptiles over the years and leopard geckos have always pretty much been my favorite um my other favorite are um green iguanas but we're not in a position at this moment to be able to have a green iguana but sometime in the future possibly that could happen again i owned around about 30 leopard geckos at one point uh mainly females and i was thinking i i'd probably go into breeding but i just I, when i when i actually had them they were more pets to me and i'm really glad that i made that decision even at a young age that i would not i wasn't going to breed nothing against breeders or anything obviously but I, it's just something that i'm glad i didn't do because at the moment there is a hell of a lot of leopard geckos because we were searching weren't we uh -huh. for a le leopard Gecko, and there was a lot of ge leopard geckos out there that needed homes and mm -hmm. i'm glad that i didn't really get into that and contribute to the problem so um i was busy looking to rehome a gecko um we found sapphire she's around about two <laughs> years old um so she was stated as having a few mm -hmm. of the tips of her toes missing now this is quite common with like bad sheds and everything and if you're not um keeping an eye on them when they're shedding and they're not completely removing it from their toes and it can constrict and it can cause loss of like the tips of their toes and other parts as well so she's actually got a few little fingertips missing so i've been really lucky um <laughs> in like the 30 plus geckos i've ever had um they've always been perfect I, i've been able to handle them and everything and maybe it's because i used to spend a lot of time with them um but yeah um i was thinking oh skittish animal is this right now for us but even though i kind of passed it off as being honey's honey's reptile uh it's, she's my reptile um so yeah when i was rehoming obviously i told them you know yeah my daughter's going to be involved and she is a very sensible eight-year-old but she is predominantly my animal and i'll be taking over um the care so oh, so obviously with my experience in that um i had a discussion with them uh, it was all during covid so they still wanted to do uh, like not, not a home visit but they want to make sure we've got the setup and everything which is brilliant uh so yeah i went out and i sorted out a setup for her and I'm going to show you that today. <laughs> you don't have to stand like that. <laughs> sit down, sit down. We don't want to hold her up too high because if she falls, she could fall on the floor, couldn't she? Yeah. How are you supposed to hold them? You're never supposed to grab them by what? Their tail. You good. never grab them by yeah, their tail. That's right, good girl. But yeah, for a, for a gecko that I thought wasn't going to be able to be handled very much, then, you know, this one is fantastic she's such a sweetheart but yeah I, I never really used youtube at all back back then and it was mainly just books same with the fish keeper and everything it's mainly books and working from other people's experience so i was quite surprised when i was researching well, i wasn't really surprised i suppose because um there's always been changes and you always sort of keep upgrading and keeping up with the current um, knowledge and everything but I was quite surprised with how different the care was compared to how we used to look after them before, like calci sand. Calci sand's a big no-no now, and we used to keep them on calci sand quite a bit. I mean, I never had troubles with impaction or every, anything, but obviously a loose substrate and everything is um, considered to be an impaction risk. Now, I know a lot of people will not use any type of substrate at all. They'll use like a shelf liner or like a vinyl like lining on the bottom of the tank, um, which is nice to use, you know, it's easy to clean. Um, or they can use like kitchen roll or something but 
I would prefer to give them something and I, I use something called I think it's Leo Life um, I'm not sure who is by I will put a link down below but I've started using Leo Life I've done a lot of research into that and it mimics more of it is like a sand based um, substrate but it's got a lot more other bits and bobs in there so it like clumps up a lot more it's not like your fine calcy sand or anything so i have included that in the enclosure but the main bulk of the enclosure is actually a slate bottom so it's nice and easy and that's where i feed her as well so that's gonna um massively reduce any impaction or anything because every time she's fed she's fed there and she's not gonna be picking up anything while she's eating what i've done is um i wanted to build like a custom built um jungle gym type thing for her because they do like to climb obviously you want to be using UVB and like that kind of makes sense anyway any animal that's outside pretty much any animal is going to need UVB because they're going to be exposed to it out in the wild so even though these are crepuscular um animals that come out in the evening so they are going to be exposed to some sort of um, UVB when they come out and also, uh, so like the red lights, you know, the heat lamps and stuff, uh, things like that. And you can get like blue ones now. I'd never really use them or anything, but apparently they're really, really not good, uh, especially the blue ones. So um, yeah, we steered away from them. I, was, I wasn't exactly gonna go for one of them anyway. I was looking more for like a ceramic heat um, emitter or something. But then I came across Arcadia and they had come up with a deep heat projector. Now, I'm probably like way behind with all this because I have been out to the hobby for a few years, but these deep heat projectors are brilliant. And I've bought one of them for her. So she's got one of them. She's got that hooked up to a thermostat so we can control the temperature and everything. And she's got her UVB light. So I got the probe going in then from the um, thermostat. And then I've got two separate probes on either side, hot end and the cold end of the enclosure and they're just two little thermometers then they measure humidity they're just little digital ones and you've probably seen them on my other videos and they measure humidity and temperature of either side of the enclosure and yeah basically I just custom built um that little setup there so you like that don't you it's I like love it. I know it's like a princess <laughs> castle for a gecko and she explores every single inch of it i wish she's got a three foot vivarium i wish i had gone for bigger so as soon as um we move out of this house and everything and um, we uh, eventually have a reptile room uh with our green iguana and everything in there um yeah eventually when we move and we do end up having a lot more space then um i want to upgrade this to four foot at least and i'll make another big structure for it to climb up and down but yeah she's got multiple hides in there she's got dry hide she's got a humid hide she's got a cool hide she's got all sorts of hides going on she's got a lot of foliage in there it's all fake plants so what i'm using for the plants is just plastic plants so it's quite a hard plastic and it's ones that you you can tug on and there's not like little bits coming off little bits of leaves or anything that she would like pick up and ingest and then um i've bought some little fake succulents uh so they're quite sturdy anyway and i've popped them there uh, around the enclosure so for the actual enclosure itself um it was dead easy to make and everything um i've got a couple of clips um but i didn't film the whole process the actual structure that i built itself probably cost me around about 20 pounds that would probably make me another 10 lots of these uh jungle gym type things like i could make endless amounts of them with the the stuff that i bought so that pretty much covered um so you needed the grout and you need quite an inert grout so i did a lot of research on the grout and i'll show you what that is and then a nice sealant for it that was also um safe for for animals so i'll show you both of them and that is pretty much all i spent out on it and i had a couple of paints lying around the house that i used as well so we had a few like amazon packages or whatever delivered and we had like the sheets of um what's it called polystyrene polystyrene yeah yeah polystyrene sheets uh we had a few of them and so what i did i just carved out with a stanley knife some uh circles and then i like did the edges of the circles uh, so like i made them into little, little stones and then i could stack them on top of each other and when i like stack them up and everything i'd get like a bigger bit stack there on top try and make like a little hide out of it and once i arranged it all how i wanted it i did it into a couple of separate sections so like with this as you'll see like the stairs come apart um this splits from here this lifts i don't know if you can see that yeah so like this half, this half are two separate ones and then you've got the stairs. 
so yeah i did it into like um a few different sections and when i decided that's the actual setup i wanted i just used a hot glue gun glued the little pieces all together and that held it in place and then what i did then was just use the grout uh so i just mixed that up to a consistency that i wanted now some people will put uh, like multiple layers up to like 12 layers thin layers of the grout mixture just painting it on making sure you're covering absolutely every part of it letting it dry for 24 hours and then doing your next coat so some people will repeat that process and with like a thin layer for like 12 different layers sometimes uh, i'm really impatient and i knew i wanted to just get it rehomed as soon as i could so i did about three layers now i done like a medium kind of layer on the first go round and then I got a bit fed up after letting it dry <laughs> I wanted to like whack it on so I proper mixed it all up and done like a nice thick consistency um that's why you'll probably see it's not completely perfect and you've got like little lumps and bumps but that's absolutely fine um I did all that and then I did a final one just to neaten it all up and um fill in some of the holes and then once that was all dried, uh, so it feels quite hard, you're still going to be quite gentle with it, but it's quite hard. And then I just sealed it all with something called Mod Podge. And what, I did a bit of research on like different gecko groups and stuff with people who have done different enclosures and not just geckos, other types of reptile enclosures. And this one was recommended quite a bit, but it was you were told to like leave it dry and air out quite a bit because of the smell and everything. So... I completely sealed everything so you want to make sure you do that so you haven't got like any live food if you're leaving live food in there you don't want them like digging through and like eating any of the polystyrene bits and stuff you don't want them exposing any of that to your gecko but you also don't want them eating that ingesting it and then that is then passing into your gecko so you want to make sure just everything is covered so it's all nice and sealed and once that's dried I left it air dry for uh, like two days but then I did let it air out for another couple of days until the smell had completely gone uh, popped it in, popped all her substrate in and everything, a uh, little takeaway tub that I got, I just cut out a side of that, added in some tissue paper and I just missed that and that's part of her humid hide. And then I poked some holes with a screwdriver in some of the grout and that's where I placed the succulent plants and then I just planted all these bits everywhere and in the slate she's got quite a shallow water dish um um i'm not too comfortable with them going in like quite a deep one especially like the really deep exoterra ones i know you can get like different sizes but i managed to get this one it's probably about this deep and um, we just fill that up and she has a little paddle in there which is nice for her feet then because it helps loosen up any uh stuck shed so the slate's directly underneath her deep heat projector and she likes to bask there and then if she's had enough of that she might go into her humid hide she uses that quite a bit i hand feed her then with her tongs so i don't leave anything in there overnight i don't tend to feed crickets um i don't tend to like crickets as a feeder anyway um but as soon as I've got the mantids and everything, I bought her some locusts. Now, my uh, adult mantids absolutely love locusts. They love Turkestan roaches. That's one of my best go-to feeders. But yeah, she's a very healthy, nice size leopard gecko, other than the little tippy toes. Like, we got a little bit of stuck shed there at the moment, but that's easy enough. We'll just soak her in a bit of water, use um, a Q-tip and just loosen some of that up but she's super friendly so i was worried that we would have a really skittish one i mean that's fine i don't mind just observing them in um, their habitat and stuff but it's nice that she is very very handleable she's so sweet because whenever we come past um she'll always come out to say hi and violet loves her doesn't she um uh, my youngest daughter she absolutely loves her she cannot wait to get her hands on her so there is a lock on my viv and i yeah she's not going to be going anywhere near her for a while i'm just so glad to have a let her go back in my life um i'm definitely going to be looking at rehoming some more obviously not cohabbing or anything but um yeah i i i do miss i do miss this hobby i don't miss the community um even though um i've met quite a few nice people on um the instagram side of things so obviously i've got that for all my other animals and stuff and i know quite a few people on there that are in the reptile community that have the same views as me as well you know they are very helpful and they don't believe in like bashing people and stuff and they also have had concerns within the reptile hobby before with people's attitude and stuff i have been very reluctant getting back into that side of the hobby but these people they, they are great so i think if you're also having that trouble i'd say stay away from mm -hmm. facebook groups they seem to be 
the worst as well as youtube comment sections now we might have that going on here who knows uh, but yeah uh they tend to be the worst places and you'll always get your online uh google experts that will comment and will always have an opinion and you can never do anything right uh there's people that strongly strongly against loose substrate completely against loose substrate but I'm not and I like to see them having some enrichment and uh, exhibiting some natural behaviour with their digging and everything and like I said if impaction is such an issue then make sure you're just feeding on like the slate or something you know there's always some kind of debate in care and there's always advancements in care and everything so I've really tried to steer away from making like a care video for any reptile and I might never make a care video for a reptile I might just let you know how I do it just very briefly but I don't think I want to do it anything in depth just because of the backlash that you will get from all the online experts what's that <laughs> say hello to everyone that's watching <laughs> You are treated like an absolute queen, isn't it, babe? <laughs> so yeah, the that in that I use, I use the Arcadia um, Shade Dweller UVB bulb, and um, I'll use the Arcadia Deep Heat Projector as well. Now that's all that I use. Uh, I used to use heat mats back in the day. I've completely gone off heat mats, even for the snails. I'm trying to think of a new way of being able to provide heat for them. Now I provide a basic care guide for them because I know quite a bit about their care and everything so I'm quite confident in doing that uh so yeah the there's a debate around all the heat mats and everything with that and pos positioning and everything to be honest heat mats are completely crap when it comes to snails um I mean you can keep them alive and keep them healthy and everything but there's got to be better options out there and it's not explored enough because there's not as many people like in the snail community as there are in the reptile community and there's not a lot of people that actually care about upping the key of snails because like obviously in the business and everything they're selling more things for reptile keepers but yeah anyway there's not been a lot of um research done into like the pet side of keeping snails personally i think after having one of these deep heat projectors i think they would work pretty damn well for uh for african land snails now obviously don't go chucking one in if you might end up like killing or burning your snails or anything don't do anything like that i'm just saying in theory, I'm thinking they would be a very, very good uh, way of um, providing thermal energy and thermal heat for snails. Uh, so yeah, that's something I might be experimenting with myself. But yeah, you have to find a safe way of actually applying that to an enclosure for a snail tank. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the Arcadia range of lighting and everything. Um, I mean, I used to use them years ago anyway, but uh, seeing as it's been such a long time since I've used them, seeing all the improvements and all like the new mod cons and everything it's been really nice it's nice to be back that's all i can say i feel like i've got myself back again because uh, this was like i said for many years this was my bread and butter thing this was what i did this is what i knew and this is where i traveled to to all the shows and everything this is where i done all my research in it was just my biggest passion was reptiles all down to a simple little leopard gecko that i was bought when i was eight years old same age as you now you've got your first one so yes yeah, sapphire obviously she's re been rehomed now she's having the absolute time of her life living in her new mansion she's definitely not gonna be bred from or anything like that obviously you don't do that when you adopt and it's just not something that interests me breeding reptiles in any way whatsoever even the snails i'm not interested in breeding i'm more interested in giving any unwanted pets a home as long as they're weird and wonderful really <laughs> we have pretty much everything in this house don't we babe <laughs> this like us in our house <laughs> you can tell them tell them it's fine <laughs> there's slugs in our house I, what's wrong with that it's weird it's not weird it's not weird <laughs> I was gifted those slugs. I've got pancake slugs. I was gifted them, thank you very much. We had about five and we've got about five million. Um, what's the wrong? Are you embarrassed because we've got slugs? Yeah, I'll just show you some footage now of the tank and everything. And uh, if you've got any questions about how I built the tank or uh, how I built the enclosure or anything, like any questions at all, obviously, like I've not really gone into depth about K Guide. As I said before, I didn't really want to. I just wanted to show you 
who I've got and what I've done for her and uh, I just want to try and inspire you because if you haven't provided um, like lots of hides or um, lots of like climbing space or anything for your leopard gecko when you was looking at actually making something then I was hoping even though it's not an in-depth guide that this might be able to inspire you to try and make something a bit better and just give them a better quality of life you know so honey um that's all from us so we've got to end the yeah. video and seeing as you are a youtube expert what do we say what does what, what all these people <laughs> that are watching what have they got to do if hit they like? the subscribe button and make it turn gray turn the bell on to all notifications okay and if you like this video just scroll down and you should see a thumbs up button and you should click that there we go <laughs> so do that for honey <laughs> and also head over to my instagram so my instagram is no longer amy's animals it's amy's planet uh amy's dot planet and um yeah head on over there because sapphire has been around for quite a few months now and i haven't made a video about her but but everyone on instagram <laughs> knew about her obviously because that's where i put all my information up first and so yeah head on over to there and look out for more of our videos i suppose mm -hmm. <laughs> all right then thank you very much for watching and like honey said make sure you subscribe and head over to the instagram like share whatever you're gonna do uh just to show us your support that would be absolutely fab okay right thanks from me thanks from honey and thank you from Sapphire. Bye. Bye. <laughs>